Okay, Greg Peterson on the line from Husker Online. You can join him right there. Also does work for Rivals and has for about 16 years, both on the national front and covering Nebraska football right here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, where, of course, it's our mission to bring you the best discussion, debate, and analysis on the game we all love each and every day. And uh, you mentioned some of the guys as we went through the positions coming in from the 2019 class. As we look ahead to 2020, we can kind of disregard the rankings and the stars right now in regards to obviously a lot's going to happen between now and when the, um, the, the ink goes on the dotted line coming up in December. But your thoughts about uh, some of the, the players that have been uh, uh, made a commitment. It, it appears to be about six hard commits right now for the 2020 class. Yep, we have six right now. And uh, the latest one was uh, from Nash Hutchmeyer, who's a uh, defensive tackle um, out of Chamberlain, South Dakota. He's the number one ranked uh, player in South Dakota right now. And he just uh, committed last week. And, uh, you know, I could see him playing on the offensive side of the ball, too. But, you know, he's a big six foot five, 305 pounder right now. And once he gets in here, I'm sure he's going <laughs> to get bigger. Um, that's kind of what's. Coach Frost and uh, those guys are all proud of what they do to their their bigs. Um, you know, we've had the longest commit is a quarterback, Logan Smothers. Um, you know, he's a four star. Um, he's out of Alabama, so Muscle Shoals, Alabama. So uh, one that got away from the Crimson Tide right there. Um, he's one guy I have not seen in person. Um, usually, you know, by this time I've seen about everybody in person, but. Uh, He's one. He didn't make it to any of our rivals camps this year. Um, one of our one of our national analysts, Chad Simmons, is uh, about the only one that's seen him in person so far. So I'm looking forward to getting to one of his games. Uh, but you know, he, he's a highly rated kid. Um, then you've got uh, another four star, Xavier Betts. He's a wide receiver out of Bellevue West here in Omaha again. And uh, you know, rivals 100 kid that he didn't make it to any of our rivals camps so he did not get invited to the five-star challenge last week unfortunately uh most Husker fans wanted to see him down there but you know what i've been watching this kid play since he was a freshman and you know he, he's impressive you know he's all a foot all of six foot three 200 pounds and he's another another guy that every time i see him he looks like he's gotten bigger um you know so he's a specimen right now and uh so he's going to be one of the higher higher ranked kids in in the Nebraska class. Um, then you've got another big offensive line in, in Turner Corcoran. Um, he's out of Lawrence, Kansas. He's uh, one of the top players in the state of Kansas. Another four star. He's big six six, two hundred and seventy pounder. Um, so he's a guy that looks like he could come in and play right away next year. You know, being one of the anchors of that two thousand twenty class. Um, another offensive lineman, uh, Alex Cohn. He's another another Kansas guy. So, uh, you know, Nebraska protecting uh, their borders pretty well here, getting to the top offensive lineman in Kansas. He's 6'6", 275 pounds right now. So you kind of see a trend of uh, the, the big guys that uh, this coaching staff is going after. Um, you know, 6'7 and up, it's it's pretty much desirable for these guys. Uh, and there's a, there's, a, there's a guy to watch uh, in the 2021 class. He's out of uh, Elkhorn South in the Omaha area. His name's Teddy Prohaska. He's six foot nine, three hundred pounds right now. Uh, just finished his sophomore year, and uh, this kid—I mean, he's—you uh, know—he's got a Nebraska offer. He's got several, several offers up to now. But uh, keep an eye on him. He's uh, definitely going to be a Rivals one hundred guy when it's his turn. Um, and then uh, to round out what they have uh, right now, you've got a defensive back from uh, Orlando, Florida, in uh, Tanyan Lineham. Um, he's unranked right now by rivals, but he's another one of the, you know, he's six foot two, 100 and about 180 pounds right now. Um, as soon as, uh, you know, one of our, one of our analysts down in Florida, Rob Cassidy or somebody gets eyes on him, he'll end up with a star ranking. So right now, you know, six commits, not too bad. Uh, rivals ranks our class right now at 59, but like you said earlier, it's, it's way too early to count any of this. And, uh, it was nice to finally get a couple of commits rolling here lately after, you know, they'd had kind of a dry spell um, for several months, but uh, ended up with a couple last week after uh, their camp season was all over with. And, and the big one was Hotchmeyer who uh, they were head to head against Wisconsin on that one. And uh, Huskers beat out the Badgers on that one, which is uh, pretty important right now since uh, what Nebraska is uh, what one in seven, I think against Wisconsin since joining the big 10 and, 
you know, it's kind of hard to to recruit against Wisconsin when you're going after the same kind of guys, and uh, you can hold that over Nebraska's head. Say, hey, if you want to win, you come here. So. Yeah. And Greg, you're bringing up an interesting point that I would love to hit you up on because there's a few programs in the country that fascinate me. And it's not Ohio State and Alabama and Clemson. I know what they are. I know why they win. I know that they've got uh, you know resources all over the place. It's it's the likes of UCLA. Why don't they win? Kansas State. What did Bill Snyder do <laughs> to to possibly win with uh, you know recruiting classes ranked in the 60s and 70s? Wisconsin. You mentioned what they're able to do despite not having players in their backyard. Scott Frost comes back to Nebraska. The the brand, the resources, facilities, all that stuff's there, but you're isolated when when it comes to volumes of elite talent. So it's just a fascinating dynamic in in the approach and how you get things done. And it wasn't like Mike Riley had bad recruiting classes. They were usually in the 15 to 25 range. But uh, just in regards to your evaluation of what Scott Frost is trying to get accomplished in, in that regard. Well, the biggest thing is that Scott Frost and his – Hey, Greg, if you can still hear me. Can you hear me? Okay. You, you froze up for oh. – Okay. You, you said about three words and then he froze up. So if you oh, can just take it that. at the end of the question, no worries. I edit all this up and just okay. get started whenever you'd like. Yeah. Um, you know, like I was saying, you know, Nebraska, Scott Frost and his staff, they know that they have to recruit nationally. Um, they're just, there isn't the kind of prospects growing up in our backyard here. Um, so they prioritize getting out there nationally. They, they have heavy ties in the state of Florida. We know that they have ties in the state of Georgia. Um, Mike, you know, when you compare that to Mike Riley's staff, you know, they were heavy, heavy out in the California area, heavy West Coast recruiters. And uh, you kind of – you saw the drop-off of, of them trying to recruit the East Coast, um, where Nebraska's traditionally done well in states like New Jersey and in Florida. But uh, this staff knows that, you know, every single guy that fits their profile, they're going to get out there, they're going to offer them, they're going to see them, um, you know, our staff, we, we go, we spend a whole week on the road with the coaching staff as they travel around the country on all these satellite camps that they go to. And uh, you see them making inroads. You know, they're out there, they're making new offers, um, they're catching up with guys that they have offered and, you know, getting the latest on them. Um, so they're out there grinding and they know exactly what they need. Now, everybody's heard of the, the 500 mile radius that they need to dominate. Um, which, in, you know, like I said, some, you know, they've been doing a real good job here around, you know, around the state of Nebraska, but you can always do better. And St. Louis is a key area that right now they're kind of struggling and getting some of those top St. Louis guys. And, and that has been kind of the trend coming down the last few years. Um, I'm not sure why that is, but uh, they really do need to work on that. But the key is, like I said, the key is recruiting nationally. You got to know. I mean, they're hitting the state of, of Arizona. They have been now pretty hard. Um, they're moving harder into California now. Um, but you're always going to see that. You know, they're always going to go after all those those South Florida guys because they they value you know the speed and everything coming out of that. So and you know they've had luck in some you know in Alabama stuff like places like that Nashville um they got they got a great uh linebacker out of the Nashville area in the, in the 2019 class and uh you know looking for big things from him too so you know they're getting out there they're doing the thing nationally and they're trying to control their own borders and i think one of the bigger things too is locking down the state of Nebraska because there's been a trend like under the last couple of stats when you had some big names going other places um you know, Iowa was no no offense from Iowa. You know, he was a first round draft pick, and you know he's an Omaha guy, and you know he should have played at Nebraska. But there's all kinds of guys like that. Wisconsin has a big defensive tackle out of the Lincoln area that that got snuffed and didn't get offered till late. Um, Harrison Phillips, he's plays for the Buffalo Bills, played at Stanford. You know, another guy that Bo Pelini didn't offer in time, and he ended up going to Stanford. So. 
you got to lock down these kind of guys. Don't let them leave the state, and they're doing a good job of that right now. Love the Nebraska breakdown with uh, Greg Peterson. You can join him on Husker Online and on Rivals, where he's been doing work for a long, long time. Greg, we appreciate you stopping by. You are welcome anytime. Uh, this was a great uh, breakdown of Nebraska football. Uh, I'm a nerd that uh, likes to have a pretty good feel for every team in the country, so I cannot get enough of personnel breakdowns to try to keep up. So thank you so much. Absolutely. Hey, my pleasure. I had a lot of fun.